next presenter is an artist, educator, writer, inventor, and researcher working primarily at the interface of art, science, and technology. He's a co-founder and former director of the Pioneering Research Center and doctoral program DX Arts, where, he's, where he is currently an associate professor. Also, according to Robin, he looks really good in leather pants. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Rexy. Robin, I can't believe you remember the leather pants. Um, actually, when Corby started reading um, sort of the, the litany of stuff either that I've done or the labels that I'm called by, I was actually still in the moment of listening to everyone else sort of uh, basking in the more than mortal light uh, that we both shed for Robin and received from her. And uh, I think originally I was asked to maybe speak a little more academically, a little more rigorously in terms of some of the things that I see in my own research practice, what's coming, what could be the future of a place like Real Girls, because, um, yeah, I work in media. Um, but I actually asked to speak a little bit more personally, if that doesn't uh, uh, bother you. Uh, I've got some notes in case I uh, tear up or uh, decide to drift off message. Um, but I ask myself, when was the very first time that I remember uh, meeting Rob and when I can sort of really ground myself in a, in, a, in a precise moment. And we had passed as colleagues, even Coley, I remember seeing lots of people at UW early on. But I had invited Orlan to come speak at the University of Washington. We packed her into Kane Hall with about 2,000 people. And of course she stands up there with an interpreter and she starts sort of listing off uh, a dry critical theory, uh, art history, uh, etc. And the audience seemed perfectly prepared for that. But when she began to show the videos of her body modification surgery, uh, I got a very deep, weird glance from the dean who had paid probably $5,000 to fly her in. Uh, and all of a sudden, maybe 2,000 people had left in under three minutes. Uh, King Hall was absolutely evacuated. Um, and the kind of rattling around, you know, left a, a sophomore professor feeling very anxious uh, about the kind of risks that I was willing to take and I thought I needed to bring to this place. And I glanced over my shoulder, and lo and behold, there's someone who's still on the audience, still fully engaged, still fully entranced, and it's Robin Held. Um, I remember at the end of the um, uh, lecture, of course, there was very light applause because there were only a few hands, uh, those including Robin. And Robin had the chutzpah, the balls, the brass, to come down and invite uh, Orlan and myself and a few other people with us to Chez Chez, the inimitable French restaurant of Seattle. Uh, and we stayed there all night until uh, they closed down, uh, talking, arguing, uh, really wrestling with the ideas that had been presented. And I know that some of my assignment was to really talk about how and why sort of the synergy of Robin works, especially in a city like this. Um, and I began to think back sort of about my own uh, work with her because we've done a number of projects over the years. And all of you have had things that I think that she has supported that seem absolutely improbable. Uh, for the Genesis exhibition, I designed a project that had 8,000 working parts, six custom computer languages that only a few people in the world could read. There was a 24-hour, three-person call center uh, running the project in the background. Uh, it was so complex that even today, you imagine that if you had a library book that could remember everyone who ever touched it, every page that had ever been opened, every orientation, every book that had ever been placed next to, everything except what had been taken away from it uh, was how complex that project was. We can still play it back in real time. Over two years, we can compress it. It was just extraordinary to have someone like that uh, supporting that kind of work. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been 17, nearly 20 years that we've known one another. Uh, I do want to read a couple of things really quickly because I think it might uh, help uh, uh, maybe keep me on point, a message. And some of those really have to do with, uh, yeah, sort of what I think is coming. And uh, clearly, it's, it's hard even for me as a professor to be up here and have my own students come up and speak before me. Uh, in the past, it shows that I've been at this quite a long time. Uh, but I thought that the the hiring of Robin by Real Girls was absolutely a brilliant move. Those of you, even the city, who think that this is you know, preposterous, another sort of uh, death-defying act by Robin, it seems like her entire career has been about defying logic. And you know, 
along with sort of the history of media, my parents were television producers. They were the producers of the Grand Old Opry, so I grew up on the floor of a TV studio. So I know this stuff intimately, it's sort of in my DNA. Uh, but if I was going to have someone, choose someone to uh, chart the course of an institution uh, that has you know, such a rare commodity of these young minds and these young lives, uh, I could think of no one better than Robin. Um, because you're looking at things like limited, uh, limitless game style uh, interactivity, uh, with your audiences, you've got uh, advanced performance capture, uh, new uh, presentation opportunities that we've never seen before, artificial intelligence, cognitive science getting built into the films and to the media that we're using, uh, lifelike 3D projections, VR devices, haptic immersive systems, personalized movies that are actually geolocated and georeferenced to the viewer themselves, meaning they're not pre-rendered. Yeah. Yeah, it's all porn. Yeah, Machinima. Uh, I serve on the National Science Foundation. There's a huge section of Machinima funding right now. Uh, so it's amazing space-time correlation editing software, uh, which no one's ever seen before, but I promise you're going to see it. Uh, and there's a whole litany of things that I would probably say. Um, I would probably, the last thing that I would say to real girls is um, that beware because she's actually going to do what you've asked her to do. She will accomplish it. Um, and I, uh, yeah, wholeheartedly uh, send out my love and support. And like Corby said, I'm one of the litany of people who will do whatever I need to do to lend a hand to make it possible. So thanks. Robert.